In this video, we're going to cover how to use the two rail sweep tool. This will use some basic vectors, which we can create with using the drawing tools within the software to create complex 3D components that will be used in larger 3D projects. Let's close this off and start with our first file. So let's begin by going to open an existing file and we're going to open our rail example here. And this will help show us some of the basics of the two rail sweep tool. As you can see here, we've got a variety of basic vectors that we've created within the software using our vector drawing tools. These are made up of what we've created as rail vectors, which are these two at the top and bottom here, and then these two straight lines down the bottom here, and then vectors that we're going to be using as our cross sections later on, which are these three vectors in the middle here. We'll see these in use as we go forward. So let's move over to the modeling panel and open up our two rail suite tool. Here you can see the form, and the way that we want to start this is with a minimum of three vectors. We want two rail vectors, and then at least one cross-section vector. So, to get started, I'm going to select my two rail vectors by clicking and dragging a box across these two vectors here. And now with these two selected, I'm going to click on Use Selection to set them as my rail vectors. As you can see here, they have been highlighted in green and red to represent the two different rails. And you can see a green start node at the beginning of each one. These start nodes indicate where the cross sections are going to begin their sweeping from for the two rail sweep. And then they'll progress along the arrows, as you can see on the lines here. You can also clear the selected rails using the clear rails button. This will unselect every rail that's been selected and allow you to select some new ones. So this time, instead of selecting both at the same time, I'm going to select one at a time. So I'll click the first line, hold shift, and click the second line. Now I use selection again. And as you can see here, the colors have changed now. The first selected vector is always the one that will appear in red. And this will become important when we make our first two rail sweep. So I'm going to select this angled line here to become our cross section. I'll select it, and then I shall click onto one of our drive rails to set it as the cross section on that line. As you can see here, there's a little red dot on the cross section line to indicate that it is linked to the cross section here on the drive rail. This red dot will be running along the red line as it goes along the two rail sweep. So we should see the high point on this line to be on this green side as we now click apply to create our first two rail sweep. Now if I open up the double view, you can see that that is indeed what we've received. So keep this in mind when you're setting up your two rail sweeps and make sure that you have the red drive rail set to the side you wish in relation to the cross sections you're going to be using. As you go forward, you might find that you need to switch some of these around. And this is easy to do. So one option you have is to right click on your drive rails. And here you can choose the swap rail order option. And as you can see, this will switch the colors, which will flip the drive rail, which the cross sections colored node will be following along. I'll just put that back for the moment. And some of the other options we will be looking at now will be the scale cross sections with width. If I just turn this on and apply, you can see here that the overall height of the cross-sectioned part has now increased based on the width between the two rails. Where the rails are wider, we have a higher part, and where they are thinner, the height reduced. Just for comparison, I shall turn it off and apply once more. And you can see here we now have an even height across the entire part. Another option we have is to scale this to an exact height. So if I turn this option on, you can see it's already scaled it to 0.5 inches. And I can choose any number here to scale my part to. So for example, one inch will be double the height of my previous part. Let's turn that off. And now for the next part, we have our standard combined with other components options, which you can read more about in the create shape guide. And then finally, we just have a name for our component, which I'm just going to call to rail sweep. And then when we have created the component as we want it, 
We just click apply to make sure everything is set up and then close. And you can see here, we now have a 3D component created in our modeling panel. One important thing to note is that this new component is completely separate from our existing two rail suite vectors that we were using. It's not influenced by them anymore, and but changing those vectors will not change this component. If we have found that we have created a 3D component and it's not exactly what we want at this stage, we have to delete it and then start creating it from scratch again. So make sure that you apply and check your part in 3D before you then click close to exit the 2 rail suite form. So I'm going to just delete this component for now and we shall go back into our 2 rail suite tool. Let's select both of my rails once more by holding my shift button as I click on them and then I shall use selection. Let's use the rounded cross section for this next piece. So I shall click on that cross section and click at the start of one of my rails to apply that to the drive rails. And then I can click on apply to add that as a 3D component. Let's have a little look at the side view of this. As you can see, it's a sort of a roundish blob. Now, one of the things that we can do is add additional cross sections to this. So I'm going to select our molding profile vector here, and I'm going to use this to apply a cross section at the far end of my two rail sweep. So I just need to click on the red dot here. And as you can see, we now have got a yellow dot here, which is corresponding to the yellow dot that we have here on the cross section part. So you can see here, we have a red dot for the half circle cross section, which corresponds to the red dot here and a yellow dot here for the second one. If I then go ahead and add a third cross section into this, you can see it's now using a green dot to help signify that. I'll remove this cross section for now though by right clicking on the cross section line and using the delete cross section option. So with these two applied, I can now click apply and show you the final result. And as you can see, it sort of blends from one to the other as it moves across the two rail sweep. So I can then name my cross section anything I want, which I will just call two cross sections. And then click close to create that as a 3D component. And just like before, we can select it, drag it around and do anything else we'd like to do with it, such as rotate or scale it. For now though, I'm going to delete it and go back into our two rail sweep tool. And next I want to illustrate what we can use the sweep between the spans tool for. So I'm going to select my two rails once more and use selection. I'm going to then select my angled line here to be my cross section for this part. And I shall insert that as before by clicking on one of the drive rails. As you can see, it's being used for the cross section on both sides. And when I click apply, we have our normal component there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the right click option here to copy my vector and then do the same again to paste a copy of it into the job space. I can then with it selected, press the H key on the keyboard to flip it horizontally. So as you can see here, we have a mirrored copy of the same vector. I'll reselect my rails. With this vector selected, I'm now going to insert it as the cross section at the far end of my two rail sweep. And as you can see, like before, we now have got the yellow node to indicate that it is in fact being used at this end of the two rail sweep. And when I apply, you'll see that our cross section has changed and the raised line is now moving across the part to join up with the opposite side. However, if I turn off the sweep between spans option and apply again, you'll see a very different result where the center line for each one of them goes across and quietly blends into the other end of the two rail sweep. This option only works when you're working with cross sections that have got the same number of spans in them. Otherwise it will not activate and we'll just pretend it's off the entire time. You can see the effect of this if we introduce a different cross section. And if I use my molding line here as one of my cross sections and replace the far end cross section of my two rail sweep with it and click apply, you can see our different result here in the 3D view. Now, if I turn on sweep between spans, you can see numbers have appeared here on our cross sections. 
These are to indicate the number of spans each one contains. And when these numbers appear, it indicates that the sweep between spans is not actually going to have any effect. As you can see, with it turned on currently, we have it appearing like this. But if I turn it off and click Apply again, nothing has changed. So if we want to actually sweep between spans with these, we need to adjust our vectors so that they both have the same number of spans in them. If I select the cross section with the smallest number of spans and press the N key on the keyboard and then use node editing to add two more nodes into this, such as right clicking on it and inserting a point at two locations. When I then exit node editing by pressing the N key on the keyboard once again and go back into my two rail sweep by clicking one of my rail vectors and then using the reselect rails button. When I sweep between spans now, it gives me no warning and it does not show the numbers. So I can now click apply and you can see we're now sweeping between the two spans. And again, if I turn this off and click apply, you can see we get the original result as before. You can get a great amount of control over your 2RL sweep using the sweep between the spans to get different results. So I would recommend experimenting with your vectors and making sure they all have the same number of spans to see what different results you can achieve from them. So if I close this, you can see the final 3D component. I'll select this and delete it once more and back into the 2RL sweep to make another example. Let's select both of our vectors once more to be our drive rails and use selection. Now I'm going to just use one of our cross sections and apply it to our drive rails as before. And as you can see, we've got our straightforward part. We can then add in an additional cross section as them in the middle if we need to and apply again. And you can see we get our result here in the 3D view. However, if you need to, what you can do is adjust the angles that these cross sections are being applied at by just clicking and dragging on one of the nodes. You can then use this to move the cross section up and down the rails or put them at an angle if needed. Be careful when doing this though. If you make the angles too acute when you apply them, you'll get quite an aggressive result in your two rail sweep. If you encounter this sort of thing in your final piece, you need to correct the cross sections by dragging them back and forth until they sit in a sensible position and click apply once more. You can also right click on the cross section itself and use the delete cross section option. So let's click apply on that and you can see we're back to where we started. So let's close out of this and delete the component once more. Let's do one more example with this set of vectors before we move on to the next set of examples. I'm going to start up my two rail suite once more, select my two rail vectors and use selection. Then I'm just going to apply this cross section to my rails. As you can see here, we have a fairly normal looking two rail suite part. But let's say, for example, uh, I've decided actually I would quite like to alter one of the rails as part of this. Now I can do this without actually leaving the two rail suite form. I just have to click into the 2D view and press N on the keyboard. And you can see here node editing has begun. I can select one of my rails that I wish to edit and then just move it around as I would with any node editing. So check out our node editing guide for a bit more detail on this. So let's say I wanted to make it a lot shorter and at an angle at the bottom here. When I click on reselect rails, it will remember what I've done here. And then I just need to pick my cross section, click apply, and you can see here it's made my adjustments for me. Then let's just apply some more cross sections. So we've got our two cross sections here and I'll add in a third in the middle. If I right click, you can see we have the smooth option turned on at the moment. So let's click apply to show the results we've got currently. And then if I right click and turn off smooth and click apply once more, you see there is a definite line here in the 3D view. So you can use this to get some more different effects if you wish to have a bit more of an angle where the cross sections are applying themselves. Let's close out of this and just close down this project. We won't want to save it, so I'm just going to click no. We're then going to open an existing file 
and open up our closed rail example file. While the previous examples we were showing were just technical examples of what you can do with the two rail sweep, this time we're going to be doing a more practical one which you may use in a future project. So we're going to be making a basic plaque out of a 3D component. So we've got a basic outline of what we want the flat area of our plaque to be, and we have a profile vector of the edge of our plaque with this nice moulding effect. So first of all, we're going to want to make our second rail. We have our first rail, which will be the internal rail. And we want to have a second one. Let's select our vector and use the offset tool. We'll offset outwards by one inch, and we want to have some sharp corners on this one, and we'll select new and click offset. Now we have our two rails, so we can close the offset tool, select both rails, and go back into the modeling panel and create our two rail sweep. We'll use selection just like we were in the previous examples, and you can see here we have our two rails. Now, one issue that you can already see on the screen here is that the direction of both rails is going in different directions. This is indicated by the arrows you can see on the line. We want these to both be going in the same direction for a good, proper two rail sweep of this plaque. So to correct this, we need to pick one of our rails. I'll use the green one, right click and just select reverse rail. This just turns the arrows around and tells the software that we're going to be going in the clockwise direction with both of our rails for the whole project. And now we're ready to select our cross-section vector. So I shall select it and then click onto our rails to apply our cross-section. Now, as you can see here, the red rail will be the rail which our cross-section will be running along with its point on this side. And as we want the inside to be the highest point of our plaque, this is the correct way around for us. If we had it the wrong way around, we could right click on the rail and use the swap rail order to put the red rail on the inside. But we don't need to do that this time. Let's click apply. Let's look in the two side by side views so we can see what this really looks like. And as you can see, we have a few issues we're going to need to deal with. First of all, we have the fill center of inner closed vector rails selected, which is correct for this project as it results in the inside being filled in with a flat piece of material. However, one issue we have to resolve is that when a cross-section vector is selected, the software will automatically adjust it internally to make it horizontal. So you can see the horizontal line here in this white line, and as a result, the cross-section is being flattened out, meaning our plaque does not stand up in the middle. So we need to correct this before we can go any further. Let's close out of the two rail sweep and delete this incorrect 3D component to start with. We can then go to the drawing panel and get our polyline tool. And we want to add a vertical leg to the side of this vector here. So we shall use our snapping tools to allow us to identify the, the intersection of the lowest and leftmost point on this vector. Then we can draw a line vertically up to meet with the top node of this vector and then right click to close the drawing tool. Now that we've got that created, we can just select both of them and use the vector join tool to make sure that we have one open vector selected once we have used this. So let's click join and this vector is now ready to use for our molding side in our two rail sweep. So let's go back into our molding panel and open up our two rail sweep and select our two rails once again. We'll use the selection. The software has remembered the direction we want to use for this, and we'll select our molding vector again. Click apply. And this time you can see we have a much better result to start with. We've got our plaque with a raised center, which is exactly what we want. And now we just need to address some of the corners where the molding has not gotten a particularly sharp result. So, the first thing to do to address this is going to be to add in some more cross-section lines on our design. If I click into the job here, and then if I add a new cross-section here on the corner, you'll see it doesn't immediately go from corner to corner. So we need to do some manual adjustments to correct this by clicking on the node and dragging it north. We can do this on each of the corners in turn, as these will be the main problem areas.
As you can see, none of them immediately connect to the opposite corner, so we'll just do a quick manual correction for each one of them, like so. And now that we've done that, we can now click Apply, and you can see that our 3D component has been sharpened up and we now have clean, sharp corners on each side, which is exactly how we want it to be. Now that you've seen one of the manual ways to set this up, you can sometimes achieve this with an automated process. Let's just go back over here and remove all of our cross sections by right clicking and using Removal Cross Sections. Now, if I add in one cross section again, right click and then use the Add to All Rail Nodes, the software can use the number of nodes in the rail vectors to determine where it wants the cross sections to be. As you can see, it has set these all up for me. One thing to watch out for, however, is when you have two different numbers of nodes in your two rails. So, for example, if I just press the N key to load node editing and select one of my rails, and I'll just add in an additional node. So I'll insert a point, reselect my rails. If I right click and use remove all cross sections, and then try to apply that again, it won't allow me to apply it to all the nodes automatically, meaning I would then have to manually do it as I did previously. And finally, to wrap this up, let's show you two examples of certain issues you might run into. The first one would be uh, an incorrect rail running in the wrong direction. So I'm going to fake this by reversing our rail at the top here. Now, if I click apply, You'll see it's taking a bit longer to process and the final result is very garbled. This is because the cross sections are running right across the project from the in complete left to the rail on the right. And this gives us a very distorted result. So it's important to make sure your rails are both running in the correct direction to get the right results. Next, when you are working with a project such as this plaque with an internal section, if you turn off the fill center of inner closed vector rails and apply, you'll see that it is, as expected, completely hollow. Good for a photo frame, but not so much for a plaque. Let's turn that back on, click apply, and just add it back in our cross sections to get our final project. Let's close the two rail sweep as you can see, the two rail sweep is a very useful tool for creating large single piece items, such as this plaque, or using it for smaller sections of a larger project, using multiple two rail sweeps to create small sections of a more complex part. In this video, we've shown how you can use just basic vectors to create these complex components leading up to this final 3D plaque.